Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be modeling a toy brick in Tinkercad. Uh, this is a basic beginner tutorial to show you how to use some of the basics of Tinkercad. Uh, I picked the toy brick, brick because it's well known and uh, I think a lot of people enjoy it and I'm hoping to engage a little bit of a younger audience um, to get them into modeling. So let's get started and tinker this. To get started with our brick, I'm going to click on the uh, Tinkercad logo, which gives, gets us back to our dashboard where we can create a new design. So once the dashboard is loaded, you'll get the uh, create a new design thing and, uh, and that'll move us to the workbench. Once the workbench is loaded, we can start our design. To start our design, we're going to add a box. So if you click on the box, you'll drag a box into view and click again to uh, set the box. We're going to set the length to 31.8. We're going to set the width to 15.8. And we're going to set the height to 9.6. And that's, that's our basic brick. Next, we'll be adding a cylinder to the drawing. And this cylinder will end up being one of the pegs at the top of the brick. So I'll just kind of put it in the corner for now. We're going to set the, the dimensions by clicking this corner uh, indicator here, and it'll give us basically um, a circumscribed rectangle to measure the diameter. And this allows you to do both a cylinder and ellipsis with the same tool. Our diameter is 4.84. In the drawing, we have a radius. Um, so we just have to double that to get our diameter. So now we have our peg. And I'm just going to kind of leave it right here for now. We'll, we'll set it tight to, um, so the height is going to be set right with, this, with, with that cursor there. And the height is going to be 1.8. Later on, we'll move that to the top and array it. To move the peg to the top, I'm going to click it, and you'll see that one of, one of the various uh, handles that are available to us is the cone. The cone helps us increase the elevation. So I'm going to move it about up to the position I need it in, and I'm going to type in 9.6 here to move it to its final elevation. And next, we'll, we'll, we'll center it over its, its uh, final resting place. To move this peg to its final position, we need to use the ruler tool. So to use the ruler tool, I'll click it, and then I'll click a point where I want it to land. And you'll see that it's, in this case, it's oriented itself nicely to the, to the brick. Um, now to position something, you select the item that you want to position, and it fills in the relevant measurements here. I gotta say, I really love this, this feature. So the next thing we're gonna do is click on the distance from this uh, from the origin point that we selected. So that's this one right here. So we just need to put in 3.9 and we'll put in 3.9 here. So what that has done is that measures the distance from this corner to the center of the cylinder. Uh, so the rules, ruler tool, I don't know why I have trouble saying that, is, uh, is sensitive to the object you're working with and is a really nice tool I must say. So next thing we'll do is we're gonna array this, array this peg so we have eight of them on top. To create the line of pegs or an array of pegs, we're gonna use the duplicate tool. The duplicate tool has some intelligence to it, so we should be able to create three more pegs pretty easily. So first I'm gonna click, click duplicate, and that, so I have a duplicate selected. I'm gonna press the shift key and slide the duplicate out. The shift key um, makes it so that the object only moves along one axis. So I'm going to change this dimension to minus 8 uh, and hit enter. So now that's positioned correctly. With the peg still selected, it's important to, you're still in the duplicate operation. If you unselect it, you're starting a new one. So now just click this. It'll add another one at 8 and a, and a third one. And those are our pegs. Next we'll add, uh, that's our first row of pegs. Next we'll add our second row of pegs. So to add our second row of pegs, I'm going to click select all four of these and I'm gonna select duplicate. And I'm gonna hold my shift key again, but in this case, I'm moving in this direction. And then I'm gonna change this value to minus eight. And then we have our second row of pegs completed. Next, we'll hollow out the bottom and add legs. To hollow out the bottom, we're gonna use the stripe box, which is a remove tool. So we'll just click that and drag a box out. And then we'll need to set its dimensions. So the length is going to be uh, it's slightly smaller, and I'll include a link to the drawing and a, and a shot of it at the end. So it's going to be uh, 28.9 wide, or length, I'm sorry, and it's going to be 12.9 um, in its width, 
and its height is going to be 8.6. So the next thing we'll have to do is position that correctly within the box. So I've moved what uh, Tinkercad calls the hole, or the so it's a cutting box, or, or uh, whatever you want to call it. So I'm going to select both of those. With both selected, you see the shapes too. I'm going to select the alignment tool. And you can see these are the points that, where we can align um, the box. With both of them selected, you have general alignment. So it'll be centered in between the two of them. What we want to do is we want to focus the alignment on the main brick. And you see how the handles have changed. But both items are still selected. So now when I align the center, the removal box or the hole will center into the red brick. And now, and with that, we have, I can just click somewhere else, and now you'll be able to see that we have uh, our, uh, the underside of the brick removed. The next thing we're gonna add are the, are the legs. So I'm gonna start with a cylinder, and I'm just gonna put, it, put that pretty much anywhere. And let's just start setting the sizes for this. So this is the outer uh, diameter of the leg, and that's, that we have a radius of 6.25, so that's a diameter of 6.5 and we'll have to set both of them. There might be a way to set these at the same time. I haven't, I haven't uncovered it yet. And then we'll set the height to uh, 8.6, which is the height of the inside of the brick. And now let's add a, a removal cylinder. We're just gonna set that to the side so it's easier to see. And we're gonna align it later. So I'm gonna set the height of this, if I can click it, to, um, so the height, or I'm sorry, we're gonna do the radius diameter first. So the radius is 2.4. So the diameter is going to be 4.8, 4.8, and then we'll set this one as well, 4.8, and then we'll set the height by clicking this handle, and the height will be the same at 8.6. And now we're going to use the align tool again to, to uh, center these within each other. So I'm going to do or shift to, to select both of them and align. And now this doesn't matter which one we move because we haven't positioned it yet. So I'm going to align center and align center. So now we have our leg shape. So now I just gotta move that inside uh, of the uh, brick. So we'll do that um, using the uh, ruler tool and uh, next. So before I use the ruler, to, before I move this to its uh, final position, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, um, I'm gonna union this. So I'm gonna select both shapes with the, with the shift key. Once I have two selected, I'm gonna union it. So now you see it's just our hollowed out cylinder. I'm also gonna do that with the, the main body of the brick. So I have two shapes and I'm gonna union that. So now we'll be able to kind of see what we're working on a little bit better. And I think what I'm actually gonna to try to do is create the array first and then put it in using the alignment tool because I think that might be easier. So let's create our three legs first. So to create our three legs, we're gonna do that the same way we did our peg. So I'm gonna use duplicate and to move it, I'm gonna do a shift move and kind of move it about in the, about to where I need it. Then I'll click this and change it to minus eight. And then now when I hit duplicate, it should do it for me, and it did, so that's good. So now the final thing we'll do is select all three and create a union. So it's a one, one or, you know, it's a grouped shape. So it doesn't really change anything, but now that allows us to select our brick and, and you know what, let's, let's even make this easier. easier. Let's select all our pegs. I think I can do a uh, handle, um, a box select. So that should select 12 shapes. Let's union that. So now I should be able to select these two shapes and align them with centers and be finished. Let's see if this works. It does, that's great. So now we're done with the brick and we'll add the text to the top next. To add text to our brick, we'll use the text tool and that's just gonna add a large block of text and then we'll rotate that 90 degrees. And its height is gonna be about 0.4 millimeters and that's something you can change to your liking. And let's, it's um, these measurements. This we know the diameter of the peg is about um, 4.8. So let's make the text, we'll make it 4.5. So that's the whole width of the text and let's get the, let's try to get him back into view if I can just select the text by itself, there we go. And now let's make it tight. Um, let's make it, let's just drag that down to, to get something sensible. Oops, and I changed this by mistake. Let's put it back, 4.5. A 
I'll drag it down a little bit more. That looks good. So I'm just going by feel for that. So let's uh, let's move this sort of into position. We can use so we can use the cone shape to lift it to elevate it. And now let's set that actual height, which is going to be the height of the brick at 9.6 plus uh, 1.8 for the peg. So that comes out to 11.4. So that's even with the top of the peg. So now we'll use the alignment, the centering tool, to get that into its final position. So to center the text on the cylinder, first I need to ungroup my brick so I can grab just the, just the peg here. So I'm going to grab the peg and I'm going to shift and grab the text so I have two shapes selected and we're going to use the alignment tool. So I'm going to, if you, if you notice when you hover over the different pieces of the text, the, um, the alignment tools change to what you're going to align to. So I want to align to the peg, so I'm going to click that now. So you can now, you, now the alignment tool is snapped to the peg and it's just moving the text. So first I'm going to center the text in that direction and I'm going to center the text in that direction. So now our, our uh, text is aligned and we can uh, exit the alignment tool. You can just click somewhere. Now I'm going to select my text again. I'm going to change it to brick and we've got to make it a little bit smaller. So I'm going to select this corner tool and uh, we're going to set it to 4.5, which I thought I already did. And let's set this height to just one. That looks like it's good enough. So actually, so I got to recenter it. So I should have changed that first. So we're going to do shift select. So they're both. That would be good reinforcement though. We're going to click on the brick. So the alignment tool is snapped to that and then select the centers. And then we have our brick text done. So now it would have been uh, more, a shortcut to do the brick and the peg at the same time and then duplicate that but I wanted to separate those out so we knew what was what and we'll uh, we'll do the duplicate again to to learn a little bit better so let's do that now so to duplicate the brick first we got to select it the text I'm sorry select the duplicate option and now I'm gonna do a shift move for the for the brick text so I'm gonna move it about where it needs to be and then just change this and it's gonna be negative 0.8 and enter now with the brick still selected, I'm going to duplicate again and again. And you see how it puts it, it has an intelligent duplicate. It knows how much we moved it. So now I'm going to select all four of these. You could group these first, but I'm going to show you you can do it without grouping them. We're going to duplicate and we're going to do the shift again. So I'm pressing the shift key and I'm going to drag this about where we need it. Oh, that was really close. <laughs> so I'm just going to change this to, to zero and we're good to go. So now that brick might be a little bit too long. Oh, no, that should work. So that's it. That's our uh, brick, our toy brick in Tinkercad. Um, you could also add, there's little pegs that go here. And even sometimes uh, some of the bricks have a line that goes in between these legs for support. Oops, let's get rid of that. Oh, one more step. Let's select everything and group it. So now that it's grouped, let's change its color to red. And there, that's our final brick. So I hope you like this. If you like my channel, make sure you subscribe. I'm gonna be doing more Tinkercad, but um, I'm, also, I'm also doing each of these, uh, like when I do the toy brick, I'm gonna do it in each of the CAD systems I have available to me. Um, but we'll do other objects as well, like we'll do engine pistons and stuff like that. So uh, have a great day and I hope to see you again. Make sure you click on subscribe and click the alarm bell to get notifications.